Chief reporting for CTT. I uh, said last week I was thinking about making this week uh, show and tell, but I decided that I would do that probably next week. I want to try to finish up the war. As I said, we wore a mop suit throughout the uh, entire week. I took, like I said, I think I took my shoes and socks off like maybe twice to sleep a couple times. Uh, saw lots of missiles overhead prior to the war. It was so nice to see everything in the sky. And I mentioned last week that my company commander, we parked one place and we watched the first uh, British division drive through our, our area. Another time we parked right in the middle of a U.S. artillery battery. And we're talking this big old self-propelled 155s. And I'm like, why are we here? So while we were there, we got to hear a barrage going out. So all the guns started firing. We had set up the vestibule, the 10th extension from the 577. And right after that artillery barrage, our company commander decided that this probably wasn't a good place to be with the guns maybe firing here and there. Never can tell. Counter counter battery might uh, come back. Uh, so the further we drove north, we started to see what we basically called lawn darts. And these were, I guess, unexploded ordnance, but they looked like big white lawn darts, probably six to eight feet in length. They were nosed down into the ground, and there was, you know, tail fins, and we were told, don't go near those. So one night, one of our, we, the battalion got together, I think that they announced that the war was over with, and the battalion got together before we dispersed for occupation duty, I guess you would call it because we did, did some minor occupation duty for a while and uh, <clears throat> in case the war was going to kick in again. And so this one of our first division forward soldiers decided that they had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And they went to the, we had guards, so they went to the guard and said, hey, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to use the facilities. In other words, they had to squat. So the guard could not keep the story quiet the following day. It was through battalion right away. The soldier in question that had to use the facilities was squatting right next to one of the lawn darts. I'm, we're talking right on top of it. And uh, so the guard could not keep that story quiet. quiet. And then, yes, it was one of the female soldiers. And she was like, oh, I didn't know. When they already put out through the battalion, don't go near these things even though we parked that night in two columns of vehicles and there were lawn darts on all sides of us. It was really strange that we parked there for the night to begin with. And speaking of explosions, uh, prior to us leaving our base camp to go to war, a bunch of the boys were inside the 577 one day and we were all talking about how we could make sticky bombs with our socks our um, powdered laundry soap because we had to take laundry soap to wash the clothes and I told you I washed the clothes in the tub and when I took a shower I was the only one that did it I don't know why nobody else followed my example it still baffles me to this day and um, and of course petrol or some kind of fuel igniter fuel and my squad leader the one that said you have more points than I do and I can't recommend you for promotion at this time she came in too and she heard this conversation she goes how do you boys know these things and before I could answer one of the other boys responded said this is what we did as kids we learned how to light things on fire and we are always experiment to see what would make a big flash and what would maybe blow up not that anybody would really want to create a bomb but we were always exploring you know with fire and all other kinds of things like that and, of course, when we got into Kuwait, that's when Sodom decided that since he couldn't have the oil wells, that he would light them all on fire. So towards the end of the war night, or war days, so to speak, we were so far into Kuwait that one night we stopped. And the only word I can describe it is hell. We stopped, and everywhere we looked, there was nothing but burning oil wells, and it was just filling the sky with black smoke. The fires were so bright, 
uh, we weren't close enough to feel the heat of any of those. And, but everywhere you looked, I, com I did a complete one, or yeah, 160, a 360, and everywhere, oil wells in the distance on fire. And the only way I can describe it is Dante's hell. Uh, years later, I would see a video, I think it's called The Fires of Kuwait, and it was basically a film done by, I don't know who actually made it, but it was all the international teams and the various methods that they used to put out the fires, and they put out the fires in a record time because they said it would take like X amount of years, and I think they did it in almost in less than a one. I'd have to watch the video again. I saw it on, on IMAX, and it was a really interesting thing to see. And as I said, we lived in mop suit. But of course, when they said that the war was over with, we couldn't get out of mop. We didn't get out of mop until we were back as a company element. And I remember finally they said, you can remove your mop suit, but don't destroy it. Because we're going to use them for other purposes later on. <clears throat> so... An evening fire and we had fires at after daybreak and we could have them at night after the war but before we went to war we couldn't have a fire until the Sun rose because we did stand to just before dawn because supposedly that was a tradition in the army to have a stand to prior to dawn because that's when the Native Americans supposedly attacked was right at dawn or just before dawn I have been racking my brain and on the internet when I do look to see when the Indians really did attack at dawn. Still haven't seen any major engagements where the Indians rose up at dawn and attacked an, an old army post from the west. So we had a fire one night and uh, <laughs> I was the only one around it at the time. So I went there with my mop suit peeled off my mop suit and I wore my worst summer weight. I had two summer weight uniforms of the BDU, of the battle dress uniform. And this one was just so saturated with charcoal that was unreal. I think I pulled off my patches, my name tapes. They were disgusting. The whole uniform was disgusting. It was all full of, it was just basically black, even by the campfire I can tell. It was basically black. So I peeled it off, and as I took, emptied my pockets and pulled off the patches, I just dropped it in the fire. So I took my, like I said, my mop suit, took my boots off, peeled off my uniform, shirt went in, emptied my trousers, and they went in. And then I looked, and my T-shirt was just as disgusting, and my pair of boxer shorts were just as disgusting. My socks were okay because they were in the boots and not in the charcoal. So I stripped naked. And just as I was stripping naked, finally a female soldier walked by at a distance from the fire. She didn't come close to it. And of course she put her hand up. I didn't realize that you were standing there naked. I said, no big deal. And uh, she walked away. <clears throat> <laughs> right after that and she talked to me the next day and she wasn't offended she was just surprised that she was asking me what I was doing I said I just peeled off a uniform and burnt it so after the war ended like I said I peeled off my uniform burnt the darn thing and then we I think we stayed together as a battalion a little bit then we did a little bit of occupational duty because I remember sitting in this one position just south of Iraq inside of Kuwait and I think we sat there for like a couple weeks and I will talk about the three dead camels next week because that's part of the uh, part of show and tell a little bit I really don't have nothing to show from that but the story that goes along with that might relate plus I'll just talk about things as I do show and tell so this is Chief signing out remember freedom is not free so thank a bet, hug a bet, and like I said, I, I saw hell, and that is burnt in my mind. Now, I do have pictures. I hope I can find that album. I took like two rolls of film and only a roll and a half developed. I don't know why the other half developed, because uh, the pictures I took of the trailer d did not come out. I took pictures of the dog that we adopted <clears throat> while we sat just south of Iraq inside of Kuwait for like a couple weeks 
So I'll see what pictures, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to hold them up here for you to see them or not. And when we do get back to Fort Riley, Kansas, I'm just going to play the audio portion of an old VHS tape of my first sergeant doing a speech at our awards ceremony. Because when we got back, each company held their own, own award ceremony rather than doing a collective one at the battalion, which I still don't understand. Generally do it as high a level as possible. But the battalion said each company will do their own award ceremony. So as I said, Chief, signing out. Freedom is not free. Hug a bet, thank a bet. And I'll see you next week.